everyone welcome back to my channel it's been a while since I've made a video and that's kind of why I'm here today I am currently in my last week of undergrad and something about me that a lot of people know in my personal life is that I have a very obsessive personality and that obsessive personality never comes out as much as it does as when I'm in school. So over the last four years, my head has been so entrenched in this degree that I've been getting and I haven't really had time for anything. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video because really, struggling to like process that this is my last week and I am still doing online school. I haven't gone back since March of 2020. I feel like either way I would have had a really tough time processing that I'm not going to be a student anymore but this extra <laughs> um, effect of Zoom University is making it even worse because I know next week after my last class I'm gonna turn off my zoom call and I'm just gonna be sitting in my room it's just like I haven't been in person in so long it's difficult for me to process that school is even a thing outside of you know doing homework but there's not any physical tangible thing that makes me recognize that I'm in school so I just don't know how my brain is gonna process this so that's kind of why I wanted to vlog this last week that I have to kind of make it more real. A little update about my life is um, I used to be really good at balancing school and reading back when things were in person and like, you know, a pandemic wasn't happening and my brain wasn't all flustered about it. But recently the pandemic paired with my like devotion to school and getting the grades that I want is that I have not been able to read that much. So I wanted to show you just as a little like update about my reading, the books I've read this academic year. So from like fall to now, I thought I had more, but I have four books and then two that I've been working on. Last semester, I read Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky and Normal People by Sally Rooney. And I wanna give myself a little bit of credit because this is a 700 pager. So that felt like a huge accomplishment. It was honestly terrifying. I listened to the audiobook as well as read the physical copy and the audiobook just made it so eerie and I really enjoyed it. I love Perks of Being a Wallflower as I'm sure a lot of people do. So it was really exciting to read this one. And I know from research projects that I've done about writing for young adults and like Stephen Chbosky's um, connection to that, even though this is an adult novel, is that he wrote this book for the purposes of adapting it into a movie. So I don't know when that's going to happen, but that's what he plans to do. So that's really exciting. As you guys have probably seen with the Perks of Being a Wallflower movie, his like involvement in writing that book and directing it and writing the screenplay have made it like one of the most true adaptations, which is why I'm so excited for this one. I'll probably shit my pants. The other book I read last semester is Normal People by Sally Rooney and while I was reading it I didn't think it was like the best thing ever but this also put me in like the longest reading slump ever like it's been like really hard to pick up anything after this and I've read it in November um so yeah all the other reasons I stated before like school and the pandemic have been limiting my reading but this one too like I just haven't wanted to read anything since I read this book it's just it really hit me at a reading level, not like an emotional level. I don't know, it's it's really weird. It's just, I think the, like, the way we went into the characters' heads made it so that I really wasn't like prepared to enter any other characters' heads, which is why the next book I read after that was Nick and Charlie, because I had already been in their heads in the Heartstopper 
um, graphic novels for so long, so it, it wasn't like I had to learn new characters. If you don't know, this is about Nick and Charlie from the Heartstopper graphic novels, and I read this just over Christmas holidays as like a little, you know, something light. Uh, it was really fast, really lovely. Nick and Charlie are always a delight, and Alice Oseman always writes in such a way that makes you feel so nice afterwards. The next book I read was The Writing Life by Annie Dillard. This is like a memoir-esque book about Annie Dillard's experience writing. Uh, I had to read it for one of my classes, so I don't know if you would count this, but it is a book and I did read it. I didn't really find it that useful and I found it a little too pretentious for me, but it was good. It was it was written very well. I just didn't find a lot of the advice applicable to me. It was for a teaching class, so we had to read it and like transfer the teachings in this book into a way that we can use it in a class. And this is very much built on Annie Dillard's experiences, and it's not really something that's very applicable to students, um, especially students that don't have the privilege of being full-time writers like Annie Tiller. So those are all the books that I've completed in this semester. I've also been making my way through Who Do You Think You Are by Alice Munro. Alice Munro is my favorite Canadian short story writer, or maybe just my favorite writer in general, and this is my favorite book of hers from what I've read at least because I haven't actually finished it. My favorite part about this book is it's a short story collection but it follows the same characters. Her writing just really speaks to me on this level, like I feel like she's in my brain feels like the way she describes emotions is the way I like see the world and it's really rare and beautiful to find a writer that you know thinks the same way as you. So yeah I love her writing, it's really influential in my day-to-day -day life and just like approaching my own writing as well. So yeah I love 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 this book. Also look at this baby, this is a first edition from the 70s like could you believe I found this and it was only like three dollars and then finally a book that I've been putting off finishing for months is I don't even know the name Aristotle and Dante dive into the waters of the world I'm sure everybody knows about Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe from 2012 but it was like one of the biggest YA novels of I think the entire decade and I really love that book I've read it like four times um, so this one was highly, highly anticipated and I got it as a Christmas gift and immediately read like 150 pages and then I got really scared that I was going through it so fast. So I stopped and I, I just haven't picked it up since. I just, like I said, I've been really struggling to pick up books because of all the reasons I listed before and this one is no exception and I think it's even compounded by the fact that I am going to never read about these characters again because something that made it really bearable whenever I would finish another Ariane Dante book is that I always knew this was coming. I didn't know when it was coming, but I knew it was coming. So I had that as sort of solace. And now once this is over, it's over. And I don't know how I'm going to come to grips with that. So earlier this morning, like at 3 a.m., I handed in my final writing portfolio is supposed to have a collection of works from my time as a creative writing student that depict my writing philosophy. So I handed that in. It was 40 pages and it felt so crazy to actually like have this physical representation of all the work that I've done. Um, as you can tell, physical representations are really big with me. I think it's like out of sight, out of mind. Like if something's not in front of me, it doesn't exist. And it's really easy to like discredit yourself. But I fucking did that. And I made the portfolio, which looked pretty cute. So on the menu for today, I need to edit um, one of my final papers about trauma writing in the writing industry and how certain experts in the field approach it. I'm pretty much done that. I just have to do a little bit of editing. Um, and then I have to work on my final writing project, which is different from the portfolio because it's a long form piece, whereas that is a collection of shorter stories and excerpts. This one we've been workshopping the entire semester. I've had feedback from my professor and the final assignment is to write 40 to 50 pages of a manuscript. I have about 30 right now and I'm just implementing a little bit of edits from 
the workshops that I had. I have to completely write, rewrite one of the chapters. So I definitely want to finish that today. And I also have to write 10 more pages so I can actually hit the word count. So that's what I'm trying to work on. Hopefully I can make some good progress and I'll take you guys along with me. I actually wanted to show you my little wall over there that has my last assignments on it. So here's my messy little wall. Um, so here are my last assignments. I have my analytical paper, another short story that I have to write, my 40 to 50 page writing project, kind of like my thesis. Then I have a history website for my elective class and a little reflection for that. As you can see, all these dates are crossed out because I managed to get extensions on everything because I've been trying to prolong it. I would have been done all this stuff actually already if I didn't get that extension and I would not be okay with that. I've been just pushing everything off. But um, anyway, yeah, here are my little notes about my writing and stuff. Spoilers, I guess. Today is April 21st and I just had my last class of undergrad ever and just like all of it, the last four years of work ended in like the click of a button on a zoom screen and I just don't know how to process that but yeah, I'm really proud of myself and um, this past week all of my like final grades have been coming in. I do have one last assignment due on Sunday that I've been putting off. I really want to get it done today because tomorrow Heartstopper comes out and I don't want to have to worry about school. But on the other hand, I don't want to be done. Like I just, I really like being a student and 
I probably will end up doing a master's eventually. I just don't really know when that will be because I definitely need to take a break from school, try to get a job that isn't working at a grocery store, <laughs> spend more time writing because I have been going to school for creative writing but it's really been on the back burner outside of my assignments and I want to get back into that because it's ultimately what I want to do with my life. Yeah. It's really weird to think that like in 2020, before the lockdown and everything got moved to Zoom University, I was like in my school, I was a second year, in the middle of my second year, and I was with my friends in like the school setting for the last time, and I walked out of the school for the last time, and it's just like... I guess you definitely take it for granted, being in the middle of your second year, you don't really like think to think that like you never it never crosses your mind that the middle of your second year is going to be the last time you enter your school like so it's just like really hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that I will never go back to school feeling your emotions is a lot not repressing your emotions is crazy I don't know how this um this channel is turning into an emotionally an emotional intelligence channel or like mental health channel or like whatever the fuck it is but i mean i haven't read anything other than heartstopper in months so maybe that's what it is maybe that's why we're here just to talk about our mental health <laughs> but yeah i'm gonna finish my last assignment <laughs> And then we'll be done. But first I'm gonna read Heartstopper because I freaking deserve it. I deserve a little peace. I deserve a little happiness and warmth. And that's, I feel like, what Alice Oseman gives me. Big love to Alice Oseman. <laughs> morning everyone today is monday april 25th and last night i handed in my final assignment it's been a long time coming um i put that one off for a week and i handed it in like nine minutes before the due date just because i didn't want to be done but i'm done now and i'm very proud of myself now, just kind of vibing in this studentless life. I mean, I haven't got all my final grades back yet, so I'm technically still a student. I still have to deal with those student stresses, but I just woke up to some feedback on my final writing assignment, like my big writing assignment for my honors writing project class, kind of like a, the thesis of this program. Um, it's from a professor that I've had numerous times over the last four years and I think I really value his opinion. I don't want to tell you my grade or anything because that would be weird but I kind of just want to read his feedback for the first time on camera because I really value his opinion. So I'm going to pull that up. About 
this professor is just, he knows how to compliment you in a way that motivates you, and he just, his recognition of all the work that I put into my writing makes me feel so validated. But, um, he just encouraged me to keep going with the novel and that I put a lot of deep thought into it and I, my perspective on writing is something that will really push me far in life. I guess this is the natural conclusion to this vlog. There's nowhere else really to go from here. I went to all my classes. I've done all my final assignments. I haven't read anything. Maybe now that I have this new amount of free time, I'm gonna read more. Maybe, hopefully, we can do that. Um, you guys, you guys know what I think. I think if you've gotten to the end of this video, I've said enough. <laughs> um, thank you for coming with me along my last week of undergrad. I felt like, I really feel like I needed this and it's been so immensely helpful. So yeah, thank you for being my emotional support and a big love. And I'll see you guys next time for another video about not school, but reading and writing and just everything I love.